There we go. Good afternoon, SLU High. We are so excited to be joined today by Sarah, who is our, the regional coordinator for all of the state of Missouri, not just St. Louis, but the entire state of Missouri, St. Louis City, St. Louis County, and the Metro East for Southern Illinois University at Carbondale, which is only about two hours away, Carbondale, Illinois. Um, and I am going to let her start by kind of giving us a, um, an overview of Carbondale for somebody who doesn't know a thing about it. Let's just start there. Okay, great. So thank you so much for having me today. Oh. Um, you, you were spot on. We are about just two hours exactly um, from St. Louis City, and we are nestled in the Shawnee National Forest. So Carbondale is a beautiful town on campus and all around town. We have just under about 12,000 students enrolled and over 200 areas of study. So there is something for everyone on our campus. <clears throat> Some of our more popular programs are aviation, psychology, um, education, agriculture, um, mortuary science. We have a new program in fermentation science that's coming out of our school of ag. Um, that's one of our newest pro programs. We have now a full nursing program, but there's, I, I, could, I could list them all, but <laughs> wow. they're easily found. Mm -hmm. That is quite an array of programs. That's fantastic. Mm -hmm. And that size is perfect for our guys. Honestly, that 12,000, that between, I'd say eight to 15,000 is the real sweet spot for our guys. They don't want to be anonymous, you know, like a big gigantic university, but they also don't want to know everybody they walk by in the first week. <laughs> so that is terrific. And I love the forest location. Tell me more about that. So Shawnee National Forest is beautiful. So there are wine trails, camping, hiking. Um, there's a little grassy lake. Um, and what's also really neat is through our rec center, we have a rental program where if you wanted to rent a kayak um, to go kayaking, you could do that. Um, so we are just kind of an outdoors friendly campus. And it just, I think, really adds to the environment in terms of just being able to just fresh air, uh, you know, new scenery just to kind of decompress. Yes. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Especially in these times, right? So good for your mental health to kind of keep that balance. Yeah. Oh, yeah. that is terrific. I love that. Um, so you said, you talked about your, your best programs. Um, so tell us a little bit more about the town of Carbondale itself. Okay, yeah. So actually, um, you guys are lucky today because I'm actually a Carbondale native. <laughs> oh, hey, there you go. Good. Oh, good to know. My parents uh, are from St. Louis and they made the trek to Carbondale to go to school um, as undergrad students and eventually got their master's. Um, so I actually grew up in the town and it is so culturally diverse. The community, the university just gives so much to the community, of course, as one of the largest employers, but just in terms of our theater um, scenes, every summer in normal times, every Thursday, we have what we call the sunset concerts, where it is just like a blend of the community and our students and faculty that just kind of let their hair down and enjoy a free uh, concert in the summer. Um, we are D1 with our athletics, so then there's a lot of um, Saluki pride in Southern Illinois. So Carbondale has about 26,000 people total. So it's not a itty bitty college town, okay. but there are opportunities uh, to get internships and to have jobs and things in the community as well as just, you know, kind of also being a student. So you get that kind of piece to it as well. Oh, fantastic. That sounds great. I love the college town setting and it sounds like there's a really good I guess it's kind of an older term, but town gown relationships, like it sounds like the town is really supportive of the college um, and yeah. vice versa. Yeah, yes. well, that's really good to hear. Come, I think folks come like my parents and just don't leave because it's <laughs> just, it's just so nice and it's great, you know, eventually I'm far out for these guys, but uh, you know, it's a great place to raise a family. Oh, that's and close enough to the city so you have that, you know, you're not so far away from a metropolitan area. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's terrific. So you already alluded to some things, but are there other things that students like to do on the weekends there in Carbondale? 
So the campus is kind of located on the strip. That's what we call it. Okay. Um, and so the, that's where there are our kind of custom eateries. Um, that's where our Newman Center is. Um, and so there's a varsity um, kind of theater. There's a Dairy Queen. Of course, there are, you know, things for libations and kind of like just to let your hair down. Um, and so that is really where a lot of our students kind of congregate, but it's all in walking distance of campus. So it's not like you got to hop in a car to go, you know, kind of explore and have a good time. Mm-hmm. Oh, that sounds great. That sounds like so much fun. Well, you mentioned mm-hmm. the Newman Center in there. I love that. So we have, you know, um, a pretty heavy percentage of our student body is of Catholic faith. Um, mm-hmm. And I know SIU Carbondale is a public school. Can you maybe speak a little bit to the faith life of students on campus? Sure, there is something for everyone in terms of what you may need to fulfill that um, that need or that desire for you. So the Newman Center in particular, uh, they just host a variety of events um, all throughout campus. They can be found on, they have their own uh, Twitter and Facebook. I believe it's uh, Saluki Catholics, um, where they're always engaging, offering free meals weekly. Um, You know, you can now, uh, you can have mass uh, virtually. You don't have to be a member. You know, you could just uh, participate. So there are lots of different faith-based organizations on campus. Well, good. And I think the nice thing about going to a public school is that you're maybe seeing something that's not part of your faith tradition, and you can discover more about that, um, try out different ones. And I know our guys are definitely really excited about that. Um, Yeah, it's needed. Uh, yes, thank you. <laughs> thank you very much. Um, something that's maybe um, just a little bit off um, a tangent on that, though, is that one of the things that our school professes is that we're going to graduate men for others. Um, is there, are there a pretty good selection of community service opportunities for students to take advantage of? Oh, absolutely. So students are able to do them on their own, but they're also able to do them uh, through our student activities and engagement office. Um, So a lot of our registered student organizations, that is actually a part of, um, in order to be a registered student organization, you have to have some sort of community service component to it. And there... um, There are shelters um, in the community. There are animals, like there's there's so many different opportunities to get involved. Uh, One of the projects that I know most recently that a lot of students kind of just took under their their belt and just kind of went above and beyond is we have the Women's Center, which is a domestic violence shelter. Mm -hmm. That's one of the only ones in the region. And a lot of our students are always, whenever there's a need, like our students just kind of, what do you guys need? And they're there for them. Oh, wow. Wow. That is terrific. Well, I can understand why there's such great relationships between the town and the university then. That is great. Oh, fantastic. And again, like the Women's Center is literally kind of on campus almost. Oh, in the, the strip. Mm-hmm. oh isn't that yeah. awesome? That is terrific. I love that. Well, in these, in these times of COVID, um, getting into kind of the admissions aspect, <laughs> Um, you and I were kind of just uh, talking for a moment about how, before we came on on the video, about how hard it is for kids to take um, ACT tests and things like that. Does SIU Carbondale have any new opportunities available in admissions because of this? Absolutely. So actually, pre-COVID, we went test optional for our admittance. So um, this rolled out, I believe, December or January. Excuse me. Um, So a student with a 2.75 is automatically admitted into the university. So the newest uh, and the most exciting news is that we are now um, test optional in terms of our merit-based scholarships. So there will be a scholarship for almost every student that is admitted to the university. Of course, the the higher the GPA, the the more opportunities you'll have. Um, But yeah, we are very excited to share this um, with our students. Wow. How, How long ago did that roll out? Last week. 
<laughs> so we are, we are right on it. That is terrific. Yes. So good. Yes. Oh my all, gosh, that's amazing. That's wonderful news. Um, all the details can be found on our scholarship website in terms of the, the actual dollar amount. And you could kind of see where you, where you sit in terms of your GPA and how much you'll be awarded. Oh, but the good. applications, you do have to apply by November 1st to be considered because they're automatic. All you have to do is apply. Okay, so there's no additional scholarship application for that. They just need to apply, get their transcript to you. Yes, fantastic. Well, our guys are, are under the assumption that all college applications are due November 1st. And we're not going to tell them any differently. So there you go. <laughs> it's called positive peer pressure. They're all working towards that. So it's great. They're being voluntold. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, well, that's exactly right. Yes. Um, so I've done a couple of these interviews and um, something else that's, that students are really interested in is finding out uh, how they can really see the university without being able to travel there. Do you have any information um, on that for us? Yes, we have uh, multiple different virtual tours, actually. Um, I have a link for our housing tour, um, and I can put it there. And then, uh, so every really every department is hosting either virtual kind of one-on-one -on -one chats as you can meet with a faculty member um like our esports arena our website is just full of virtual we're just trying to accommodate students where they are so for example we have an esports arena if you go to our website you can actually get a tour of the esports arena so definitely there are opportunities um, just listed on our website for students to be able to explore Oh, good. So you're actually going inside the buildings and not just walking around outside and saying, oh, here's the business school. And here's mm -hmm. that oh, that's terrific. That's that's really helpful. That's fantastic. And we are um, open for campus visitors. Oh, uh, OK. Very yes. good. How does that now? There, it's not as large as it has been traditionally. So there's only, we only can accommodate one family about for every two hours, depending on what the student wants to see in the visit. Um, so I just recommend that if you're interested, just have an open mind and open calendar. <laughs> um, and whatever you may have available, you know, you might want to go within the next two weeks, but we're a little bit full, so. Yes. Okay. Oh, well, that makes a lot of sense, though. And and have a plan. I mean, you should really have have a plan anyway. <laughs> Honestly, when you're if you're thinking about it. Um, good. Well, are there any fun campus traditions that SAU Carbondale has that that our kids can kind of maybe picture themselves in? Yeah, absolutely. So um, a lot of our, our, our traditions, I think, go back to our sports and our athletics. So we are D1. So we have, we have over 15 sports teams. Um, but I would say our dog pound is probably the most easy, the easiest club anybody can join. <laughs> you just you just pay 10 bucks. I mean, 20 bucks. You get a T-shirt and you, you know, you're automatically um you can go to all of our sports games for free, but joining the dog pound is just like that club that's easy to join. You meet people and it's really great. Um, and then we also have traditions going around family weekend. Um, we do contests every year for the Saluki family with like the most uh, school spirit. So that's something that's fun. Um, we do things in the springtime. Um, it's called Spring Fling, where students are able just to kind of hang out outside. There's always free food. There may be pottery sales. Um, yeah, there's always something going on on that's, campus. That's so fun. That, that sounds that sounds like our guys too. Honestly, when they're first coming in for their first junior family meeting, a lot of times they say, "I, I really want a rah rah school." So, would you say that SAU Carbondale qualifies as a rah rah school? Absolutely. <laughs> Absolute. Absolutely. <laughs> Right. Yes. So, Once yeah. a Saluki, always a Saluki. No matter where I go, um, honestly, in the country, you know, and I've got on SIU gear. Our network is just really large and folks just love, love it. So. Oh, that is fabulous. So do you know, Sarah, the tradition of the Saluki? How did how did SIU Carbondale get that mascot? Yes. So. Um, Carbondale sits, so 
Carbondale used to be known, well, Southern Illinois was known as Little Egypt. Okay. Um, I think years ago, there may have been some sort of drought in the area. And so Little Egypt kind of like stuck. And in one of the most Southern cities is Cairo or also could be pronounced Cairo. Yeah. And so yeah. the, I guess when the university was, you know, it was kind of, it fit that the Saluki would become the mascot because the Saluki is a very fast running Egyptian dog. That is Fascinating. I never knew the story behind that, but that makes perfect sense now. You are right. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Isn't there like some digging or things that go on in Southern Illinois? Aren't they, don't they find like artifacts and things? Oh, I think. Th yeah. So ar the ar archaeology department. Yes. Okay. Always. Oh my oh. gosh. Well, there you go. Well, this has been so much fun. Is there anything else that I didn't address that you'd kind of like to talk about? Well, right now our application is free. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, so it, it will be free until October 31st. So I just encourage if you've got, you know, an interest, you know, save 40 bucks, get the application in. And of course, if you're eligible um, to be admitted, you're going to be eligible for some scholarships. So it wouldn't hurt just to give us, um, you know, just complete the application and, you know, we can connect from there. Can students apply on the common application? We are not on the Common App, unfortunately. Okay. So they but would go straight to your website then. Yes. Our okay. application is pretty simple to complete. We do have some competitive programs that require additional information, such as our aviation, dental hygiene, um, and a couple of others I'm not uh, pulling. But if when you complete the application, it asks for a little bit more information for a, a few specific majors. So when you put down your major, it will give you everything that you need to fill out based on exactly. that. Then. Yeah. Okay, perfect. So what you're saying is the application is free until the scholarship deadline. Yes, So there's exactly. no, no reason why stu students should go ahead and complete that um, and see what merit-based scholarship they're eligible for based on their GPA. Yes. Fabulous. Well, thank you so much for your time today, Sarah. I really appreciate it. And go Salukis. Yes. Thank you so much. <laughs> oh, you're very, very welcome. My pleasure.